All right, thank you. Um, thank you for inviting me to this uh, remarkable event. And I want to um, present a bit of correction to words I've used over the past 35 years. You go to the next slide. Um, here are a few of the articles that I've written with my co-authors, and we would often use the word cognitive map to describe geographic knowledge in one's head, but I must admit there is a problem with that terminology. If we go on to the next slide. Um, just to give you one quick example, I turn back to 1998 when we were building a system to help students find a specific library on campus. This was back in the day when libraries were not digital, but actual physical spaces. I hope a few of you remember that situation. Um, and they were scattered around the campus. In its prime, the University of Pittsburgh had 15 different libraries, including an information science library, uh, which is uh, one of the buildings shown here. Um, the, li the library locator system showed a map uh, locating the building uh, labeled spatial, uh, an image of that building labeled visual, and a short description of the collections it contained. Um, it also gave you instructions for navigating inside the building, which I will not discuss in the interest of time. Um, the information science building um, that you see in the picture is in the architectural style called brutalism. Many would say ugly, um, and it stands out as a unique structure on the campus. And in fact, when teaching participants to use the system, one, one of the uh, participants remarked, oh, so that's the IS building. I know exactly where that is, but I never knew its name. This student did not need a map to find the library. They just needed to see the image. In other cases, it was topography, maybe a, a building up on top of a ridge. Um, that was a key. Um, and other, other uh, maybe locations around it. Not only is the word map misleading, but it's problematic in other ways. If you go on to the next slide, um, as one final example, this is an intersection in Pittsburgh. If you were in this car driving along Pocusset Street and were told to turn right onto Forward Ave, there are technically three options that you could uh, that you need to disambiguate. You could do a sharp right a 90 degree turn to the right or a slight bear to the right. And it turns out there's a simple way to distinguish those three options. Um, the sharpest turn is the only one that is right and down a steep hill, while the other two go right and up a hill. So turning to go uphill or downhill remains a feature that is still missing from most voice guided navigation systems, but in places like Pittsburgh, is or San Francisco would be uh, particularly useful. This is to say spatial memory is not a map, but a loose collection of images, maps, functions, ownership, history. Um, as, or as the Midwestern farmer would say, you turn left where the old barn used to be, you can't miss it. And that's my three minutes. <laughs> 